I guess one of the important things to me is the fact that Mississippi is always ranked 50th or 49th or 48th in these health care outcomes. I have no insurance and I have tried and tried. I have been turned down by everybody because I have a bad back. And last year I had four mini strokes. I went to the hospital the first time and I could just cry when I got that bill. And I did cry <laughs> and, and just went over there and begged and pleaded with them until they brought it down enough that I could borrow the money and pay it. And then the last three, I didn't go to the hospital. You no, know, my concern is about the cost of insurance and medication. I Me, mean, myself, I suffer with uh, blood disease. I see a uh, hematologist. And one bottle of medicine, no taller than this, costs $700. And that is outrageous. I mean, I can't afford it. I guess just why is it so expensive to go to the doctor? I mean, you go in there for five minutes and they send you out with a $300 bill. My main concern is the people that abuse the Medicaid program. Um, you know, if their kid has a runny nose, they rush them to the doctors where they can just go to the pharmacy and get some prescriptions. I work at Applebee's, they don't offer me no insurance. And uh, I've been in the hospital for stuff like dehydration and it's pretty much like put me in debt and I'm only 20, you know, and I just got bills coming in for it and I can't even pay them. I don't think that that's fair because, you know, everybody's not able to afford insurance, like I said. And um, if you can't afford insurance, why should they take it out of the income tax check? You know, that's, that's dumb. We all need some type of insurance. I mean, it, it, you might be able to afford high, I might be able to afford the low with the deductible seat. But we all agree on one thing, that we do need some type of insurance. Yeah, they need that just as much as I need it. But, you know, but if I could pay for it, then okay, I'll pay for it. But, they're, you know, but their kids still need to go to the doctor also. Really, this is kind of like, you know, socialized where everybody, medicine. socialized medicine. Yeah, that's the term, socialized medicine. I know, I was trying to stay away from the term because uh -huh. it scares people. Yeah. Who wants to throw out a similarity on how we get our insurance? Well, the how of, we're going to get our insurance was state-based with private supplements uh, where the employer does play a role and there is some accountability between the employ employer and the state. We said the state plan, no private insurance. Get them out. They're causing a problem. Get rid of them. The wellness program, I think we, all the groups okay. pretty much agrees on that. Um, I believe not just some care, but quality care for everyone. Everyone should be equal and have the same care. I'm not ready to give up my insurance mm -hmm. by the employer. Um, maybe it's because I don't trust the state to do its job. Ushering over this huge portion of the GDP for the state to run, I think is there's, there's no uh, good historical precedent that, it'll be, that it will work as well as we hope it does. We're always going to have poor people in this yep. country. It's no way around it. We just got to pay or whoever else got to pick up and pay that is able and there's no question about it. I don't see any way around it. Employees have a responsibility to provide health care for their workers. This approach makes sure they all live up to that responsibility the way they can afford. Do y'all believe that an employee has a responsibility to help provide for their workers? Yes. Yes, yes, because, yeah. you know, it's in their best interest. Yes, yeah. and if you're hiring them, then, you know, you should want to, you know, take care of them and, you know, make sure that they're taken care of, you know, not just like financially, but health wise, too. If you're going to force the employers to provide the insurance to provide fuller coverage, in essence, the main the workers themselves are going to pay the penalty because actually the wages are going to go down. Employers, they know how much they can afford to spend for each each employee. So like you said, if they start paying for the insurance, they've got to go down on their salaries because they know their bottom line. That's the bottom line. How to make people healthier. Okay, we said main thing would be uh, education. They provided health info and programs to the public. That'll make them healthier too. I think that we should have seminars like we have in right now to inform people. Uh, basically what we have right now is a sickness care system 
and we deal with treating diseases instead of preventing diseases. As a smoker, if somebody's going to pay me to quit smoking, I'm going to quit smoking. When we talk about incentives for healthy behavior, there's some things that just make me a little bit nervous. Not all people are capable of walking and going to the gym. And so what happens to those people? I don't think anybody has a right to place judgment on anybody for being fat or what you choose to do, what you choose to eat. I, I've opted to overeat, you know, and looking in this room, a lot of us have. Then if I'm going to opt to smoke, if I'm going to opt to drink, I'm going to enjoy my sin, then I need to pay for it. My taxes will be a little higher, and it's going to give me that incentive as a, a consequence to get my weight off and to be healthier. We did agree on the ID card. We did agree that it's a good idea if you have an ID card, an emergency happens, that that doctor has access to, to your records, knows what's going on with you. So that last question, who pays and how, gets you into that. Given that we're all going to pay somewhere, what's the, what's the word? What's the least offensive way? What's the most effective way? that we can do that. Well, the fairest way to do this thing is, is, is a sales tax. Everybody pays a sales tax straight across the board. The fairest tax is you buy it, you pay on every item. I have, I've got a little problem with the sales tax. Okay. Everybody has to buy, everybody has to expend, uh, but the poor has to, has to spend just about all of their money, and so that is a greater burden on the, on the poor. Health in care income tax on all individuals and corporations. And obviously for people that have no income, then that will have to be offset some way. But there is the provision in there for a health care income tax for all individuals and companies. I would call it a sin tax. Mm -hmm. Casino, tobacco, alcohol. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to pay taxes, but we're going to tax them more. I mean, we all want to put in this. I mean, we're all in this together. It's not one, two, three. We are all in the same boat. Well, the thing that really surprised me is I didn't realize the complexity that's going to be involved in fixing this situation because everybody is going to have a different idea. And if we lived in an ideal world, then it would be easy. It's easy for everybody to say, yes, I want everybody to have it and everything. But then in the real world, who's going to pay for it, which is what we're trying to figure out here. I was appalled at the amount of money that's being spent in the state uh, for health care and the amount per capita, and yet our system is so far beneath where it needs to be. And I would certainly like to see us get some kind of statewide plan that's going to help everybody. What I learned today is about the meeting in itself, because until today I never really thought anybody wanted to hear my opinion on what, you know, the city or state or whatever needed. What I want to share with the decision makers is when they're making decisions, whomever it is, that they would just make it personal, that they would uh, just think of it as it being themselves or one of their family members. Uh, but I think we all come to the understanding we all need health care. And what we need to say to the decision makers is it's time that they quit their bickering and learn to get along like we did and come to conclusion and get affordable health care. I've truly been blessed today uh, just sitting among each of you, knowing that we are as, Miss, as Mississippi, we can make a difference. To me, the writing is on the wall to those people who may be in a position to clean this thing up because uh, among a lot of reasonable people here, there is a deep-seated, seething level of frustration and that uh, we were about ready, as we've noted, to embrace some, some, some things philosophically that are, are to a great extent a lot of us would believe are somewhat contrary to what this nation has really been about for a long time. And I think it represents the fact that they don't see an answer or someone with the will to make it happen. So to me, that's, that's the message.